I'm here with voice actor extraordinaire John Stalker. Thank you for being here. Thank you, it's my pleasure. So, so let's go right to Beastly, kind of probably the, the voice you're most known for. Um, it's got that iconic laugh. You know, I used to watch the show a little bit when I was a kid, and I hadn't seen it for years, so I went on YouTube, and it brings back memories right away. How did you create such an iconic, memorable voice? Interesting. Back in the, back in the day, uh, sort of the earlier days of uh, animation's resurgence in the 80s, a company called Nelvana, based in, out of Toronto, um, used to use me a lot. They were one of the preeminent uh, producers of animation at the time. And the voice director called me in and uh, said, um, we're doing this series. Here's the picture of the character. What do you got? And we played and played and played until that came out. I've actually, I'll be honest with you, I actually stole the character. I, you know, I do a lot of teaching and I, I try to encourage my students to steal what they can because everybody's you know, production of a particular voice or sound is different, even if, you know, unless you're a mimic. But um, there was an old comedian named Jackie Gleason. He used not. to do, and away we go, uh, when he left the stage. Uh, when, he, when he left the TV stage, anyway. And I took that voice, and then I made it a little bit tighter and a little bit higher. And uh, I know I sound like I have to make pee pee all the time. When I do this. But uh, uh, that's uh, where the voice came from. And the uh, voice director slash producer said, I love it. I said, I love it too. And uh, a star was born. <laughs> I love that classical film reference. That's great, Jackie Gleason. Uh, so, so now let's go to, I, I, I was reading a little bit and I thought your, your role on Sailor Moon was rather interesting. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, that was Grandpa. I did that. I actually shared it with another actor. Not at the same time. But uh, although Grandpa would have shared anything with anybody at the same time, being the perv that he was. But uh, uh, yeah, I did some of the episodes and another actor did, uh, did uh, some of the other episodes with Grandpa. Um, I mean, it's, it's easy. Uh, it, he was kind of like me. He sat well <laughs> before he get carried away. It wasn't really. He sound. I mean, it's just basically my voice doing it. So, you know, and I happened to uh, at the time be the voice director, and uh, the other actor wasn't available, and it was like, okay, you're doing X number of episodes as Grandpa today. So, okay, <laughs> and. Uh, that's the story of uh, that's the story of Grandpa's voice. And for voice director, how did how was that? That's something very very different, right? It is. That was my first uh, Sailor Moon was my first voice directing gig. Uh, I was doing a lot of stuff on Sailor Moon, as uh, like the two liners, the three liners, the the you know the the doctor that would uh, would help uh, help uh, Serena or the some voice from the heavens and I was doing all those little odd voices yeah. happened to be in the studio one day when the other voice director uh, and the producer decided I don't know how mutual it was that he wasn't going to be the voice director anymore and uh, she turned to me and said would you like to be the new voice director and uh, interesting decision I mean I'm, it was actually meant uh, losing money because I I was doing so much voice work, it meant giving up full days uh, when I could be doing a couple of jobs in a, in a, in a day. And uh, I said, yeah, it's interesting, I'm going to do it. And today I do considerably more voice directing than I do voice work. So it was obviously the wise choice. And uh, gosh, that was about 93, I guess. So. 20, well, how many years? It's been a while. 25, 25 yeah, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, so, turned out to be a, a wise choice and certainly an enjoyable one. I, I love voice directing because, you know, when the producers aren't around, I'm boss. And now I'm going to end with my favorite question, and it's, right. uh, I don't want to stump you or anything, but I always ask what your favorite film is because I think it's You're interesting. Not stop me. Perfect. Godfather. Godfather. Original Godfather, the number one. And for any particular reason, is it the performances? I, I don't know. There was something appealing about it. Maybe I, I and you know, in another life, I was a, you know, a gangster. I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but I, I don't know why. I just glommed onto that. I've seen, I mean, a lot of films as we all have, and I, I just, uh, it was acting. It was. 
the story because I know it's sort of based on yeah. on truth and the the singer in there was supposed to be Frank Sinatra, yeah. right? So I don't know. I just I just like it. I, I never watch movies twice. Yeah. I've seen The Godfather 20 times. Wow. And it's the only one that I've watched more than twice. Well, you, I don't think you could make a much worse choice, or a much better choice. You know, it's such a solid oh, film. Francis Ford Coppola, all the great performances. Marlon Brando with oh. those cheeks, you know. Oh, going to make him an offer. Brando you know? was just magnificent yeah. in it. And uh, even the dying scene, I love when he's, that dying scene, because I've always said, if I could sort of pick a way to die, it would be like running after, I don't have any grandchildren, but if I did, putting an orange peel in my mouth and running after my grandchildren in the middle of a tomato patch, you know, and playing, and then just dropping dead of a heart attack, it would be like, that's not a bad way to go, you know? Kind of like the golf course thing, right? On your golf course, playing at 85, drop dead, that would be okay. Or, or in my case, uh, you know, standing behind a microphone. Well, thank you, you know. so much. I appreciate this. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Lots of luck. Thanks. Thanks.